Have your housing needs changed since the pandemic began? Maybe you need a home office or a Zoom room, or maybe you're looking for more gardening space or a place to entertain. Perhaps you are tired of your big house and you want to downsize and get something with a little bit less space to take care of. Join us for a lively discussion on housing reimagined and how your housing needs have changed. This is Jan Parrish with Fabulous Colorado Homes, powered by HomeSmart. I'll be joined by my amazing team of experts, Alita Antoinette with Homes That Give, powered by HomeSmart, Jane Bale with Platte River Mortgage, Megan Keller with Shape Space, and Carrie Levy with Exodus Moving and Storage. Rick and Anna were empty nesters living in a small ranch home in Centennial, but when their daughter Maya left her husband during the pandemic, she came home to live with them, along with her two young children. Five of them are bursting at the seams in Rick and Anna's three-bedroom house, so they decided to sell and purchase a bigger home for their newly expanded family. With Maya's additional income, they'll be able to purchase a five-bedroom home for less than it would cost to run two separate households. They will also have the added benefit of shared household chores and responsibilities. Anna was surprised to learn that several of her friends had done the same thing with their adult children. In fact, Anna's best friend Paula recommended her realtor friend Jan Parrish, and she helped them purchase their family home in Parker. So Rick and Anna are also looking to move to Parker near Anna's friend, and they're looking to move to Stonegate. But they'll be having a moving sale, and they're sharing all the expenses, including the moving expenses and even the organizational expenses, splitting the cost of moving three ways and then also with the organization. Megan, what do you think for helping them get organized for this move? Yes, they have a lot of moving parts coming together. Just like with anything, we would want to make sure that they're not bringing multiples of things. And so I would probably try to help each person in their own space before they bring it together. That's always my recommendation is to work ahead of it. And I think when they're setting up their space in their new home, they're probably going to want to be really conscientious of what's the grown-up space looking like? What's the kid space? Just everybody's going to need their own space with that many people in the house. So everything is going to have a place and have a home for where it's going. And then with the maintenance of the house and chores and all of that, obviously we can help with the items in the house. We can also help with the organizational function of the house. We can get a calendar and a schedule going where chores are divided up and tasks are and the grocery shopping. And we can pe help people also organize their time and their to-dos around their environment and what they need to see happening in the home for all the different needs. And, and that'll keep changing, right? Because the kids will keep growing and their needs will keep changing and we'll want to make systems that can grow with them. So everybody feels like they're at home and they're sharing space, but not on top of each other. So they won't have to move three crock pots right. or whatever. And yeah. so as far as working at the actual move themselves, they're going to be moving a couple days ahead of time to their new house and then, well, they're leaving their old house later. So how do we organize all of that with Exodus? So, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. So I, no, I, Megan, this is a great discussion. You and I work well together. I know. <laughs> well, wait, this is how it works. So with a moving company, and this is, this is generic, a moving company, it is based on the number of belongings that are being moved. And so, Megan, going in and really looking through, because with this, it's paid by the hour and we want to be um, cost effective. And yes, let us move. Uh, the new home is ready and can move. The inspection's been done and we can show up on one day and move. And this is an easy one day move. Well, I'm going to ask about whether there's going to be packing that needs to be done as well as the moving who's doing the packing. That's a key point when it comes to this, Megan, and the move is really along the packing and being ready to move on the move day. With three of them doing the mortgage together, how does that change the mortgage process? Well, it doesn't really change the mortgage process too much, but it makes a very large home very affordable. So I can see the value, you know, the overhead is probably lower for everyone involved. 
especially with the rates that we have going now, makes borrowing very, you know, inexpensive. I don't want to say cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy and Debbie have already downsized and they were quite content in their Washington Park condo until COVID. Kathy is a retired military and Debbie has five more years working as a computer program before she can take her retirement. They thought they purchased their forever home, but once they were quarantined, their two-bedroom, two-bath house felt way too small. While Debbie managed Zoom conferences in her office, Kathy wants to work out in their home gym. Debbie's colleagues never cease to comment on her workout equipment since it's clearly visible in her Zoom background. They want a designated office, a space for their home gym, and an additional bedroom for guests. Their realtors, Jan and Alita, recommended they call Carrie Levy from Exodus Moving and Storage. Carrie will help them navigate their move to Parker as well as moving out of Debbie's storage unit in Denver and getting Kathy's furniture from her brother's house in Parker. This is a great move and this is what we thrive on in finding the right solutions. Jan, please speak for Kathy and Debbie as I ask all of these questions. Okay. It's all going to be based on when can they move into their new home and when do they have to be out of their current home? Have they allowed themselves enough time to where they can have access to their new home and we can move in, and then we, on their convenience, and when they're ready to move in, that's when we come and are moving them. And so whether it's one day move, and I'm going to suggest this is going to be a three day move, but it's going to be staged at their convenience. So we're eliminating a lot of the stress. Yeah. And it looks like we're moving on Wednesday and they're closing with their old home on Friday. So it's about two and a half days. That gives us the time to be able to go in pad and protect the floors, the doors. We are moving out into, depending on the size of their home, into a truck or trailer. We're able to move that on the same day into their new home. And then at that point, we will plan because you understand on unpacking, all of us have done that. It takes a little bit how quickly they're going to need their other belongings and that we schedule that based on their convenience. This looks like with the mortgage rates being relatively low still, they had bought their other house when the mortgage rates were much higher. So even though they're upsizing, their monthly payment isn't that much different. So thanks for that, Jane. Sure. <laughs> oh, Jane. But I was going to mention also, you know, a lot of families that I'm working with these days, the multi-generational homes, upsizing. I noticed that family really is wanting to be closer to support each other during this time. I've had some families here selling their homes and moving to two units in Heather Gardens, but they're right next to each other or they're on a different floor, but they're just steps away and they can also be close to each other and help each other out. So I'm noticing that especially among people that are retiring and their kids are empty nesters and also really helping to take care of the kids and support the kids in the, in the new multi-generational homes and builders are building amazing multi-generational homes right now that can support up to three, four families in different generations, but same family living on different floors. It's, it's pretty unique right now. I think it's wonderful. Jan, I'm going to add one thing. This is the classic creating a solution. You understand it's a solution, not only for the family and coming in and the upsizing at every point, it's finding a new solution among a family that's recreating themselves. And so this whole creating solutions, I think it's the right team right here. I yeah, but- purchased a modest home in Aurora several years ago, and she was laid off at the beginning of the pandemic. So she decided to retire at 63 rather than 65, as she previously planned. She dreams of getting out of the big city and buying a home with a yard in a small Colorado town where she will care for her dogs and work on her paintings. She's anticipating another shutdown this winter and doesn't want to be stuck in the city. Using the cash proceeds from her condo, Lisa will purchase with a Heckam loan so she can avoid a monthly mortgage. She was thrilled when her realtors, Jan and Alita, recommended Jane Bale from Platte River Mortgage. Once Jane explained how a Heckam loan works, Lisa realized her dream of living in the country was much closer than she imagined. 
Let's clarify what is a HECM loan. HECM is an acronym for Home Equity Conversion Mortgage. It is a program that's available from the FHA and that's governed by our HUD, our federal government. It allows people over 62 with enough equity to have a mortgage against their property, but never have to make a mortgage payment. The client, the borrower still needs to take care of their home insurance, their taxes, their HOA dues, if that's applicable, but they could borrow money and never have to make a payment. It is a very, very complicated financial tool. It has had some wonderful results for some of my clients and much like for Lisa, to be able to buy a home, retire early, not have to worry about that overhead. It's an incredible product for the right people at the right time. It's not for everyone. It's not a short-term fix. It is a long-term financial tool to be in your home for as long as you'd like without making a mortgage payment. It is a phenomenal tool. There's a lot of moving parts in that program. It's not just a normal, here's a payment, here's a mortgage, here's your fixed rate. It's not that simple. So I do recommend we need to talk about it if it's something you're looking at doing. And even outside of purchasing a home, I had clients who have been in almost a short sale situation with being laid off or whatever, and they were old enough to get a Heckam loan and it saved them from losing their home. Exactly. So do that as well. And I have done some wonderful reverse mortgages that have alleviated so much anxiety and frustration for the client, not feeling like they have any cash flow. I just closed one last night, 82 year old woman in her home and she has fixed income and the mortgage was really limiting her ability to travel and see her family. We alleviated that pain for her. We set up a line of credit that she can access now her equity in her home without, you know, worrying about paying back that loan to, for that equity. The, it is a marvelous product, either for a purchase or for a refinance. If you're going to be in your home for a while. One of the things that I want to point out too is when you're buying outside of the Denver metro area, if you're going to Akron or Sterling or someplace kind of like Booney Docks, you can get a really good price. You'll be living in small town America, but you can get a $200,000 house, three bedroom, two bath, two, you know, two car garage. Is it going to be brand new? No, but you can do something like what Lisa did where she bought 25 year old home. She's going to fix it up as she goes. And now she doesn't have a payment, which is really great for her. That's phenomenal. And I would add, we, we sometimes get a lot of clients like Lisa who might want some budget-friendly organizing options. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of different ways we can go about that. And one of them is I can go and meet Lisa. I can walk through her space and see what she needs. And also what I know just from my experience, what needs to happen before she moves. And I can help her make a checklist of things that she can do because it's likely Lisa's a self-starter. She wants to save some money and do some herself, but she might be going, oh my gosh, I'm doing a lot and I don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. But with several clients, we'll uh, we'll do this virtually too. I've helped clients move and organize garages in Arizona, Minnesota, and I'll make them a checklist. And then we can also check in virtually with each other. What that does is it gives somebody like Lisa a lot of support in her journey without having to have an organizer on the ground and paying for that for a large amount of time. And so we're happy to make those self-starter checklists. It's very helpful. Keep them focused. Well, let's talk about Betty. She's recently widowed and has decided that caring for a big home, even while it holds wonderful memories, is causing too much stress. Since the pandemic hit, she's had a hard time getting the help she needs to clean and maintain her big family home. Betty and John raised their kids there. In fact, their youngest daughter was married in the gazebo by the pond. But the garden her husband tended has seen better days. The pond's dried up and the deck needs repair. Every room is filled with precious memories. Every wall is filled with pictures and memories of family vacations. John's office sits just as he left it when he passed in December of 2019. 
Betty's ready for a fresh start. She wants to be free to travel and not to worry about the lawn or the safety of her home. She'll stay busy visiting her four children scattered throughout the country. More time with her family is her compelling reason to downsize. She knows the move will be a lot of work and was excited when her realtors, Alita and Jan, recommended she call Megan Keller from Shape Space to help her organize and prepare her home for sale. Thanks, Jan. This is a very common situation. We actually just this fall have had six single women in their 80s and 90s, one of them 95, who have been making some big transitions. And one of them, it just happened this weekend. With somebody, like in this scenario with Betty, moving from your house that you have all your memories in, it's a lot. Yeah, I don't recommend it happening quickly. And so with a client like that, what we would do is set up working with them weekly, maybe every other week or a couple times a week, whatever they need to quickly yet slowly holding the space for them to make that transition. So we always try to start with the big and easy item. Maybe it's a big coffee table that they know they don't like anymore. Those are some easy items to start to offload. And then we get down to the smaller items that are a little harder to make decisions on. And those always happen to be a lot of the sentimentals, the knickknacks, the photos, the letters, all the memories, all the stuff on the wall. We don't hit that right away because that's just too hard. And like I mentioned earlier with any of these transitions, it's a lot of physical work, especially for somebody in an older generation. It's, it's physically exhausting. So we take on all of that. They get to sit there and just be the brains of it and make decisions and talk it out. And while they're doing that, we are really there holding a lot of space for their story and their memory. And with this client that I just moved this weekend, she's 79, and we started working with her in June. And so we worked about every other week for five or so hours and just slowly pared her down. And she really needed that time until she was finally able to move. We were there managing the movers, so she was not up and physically having to go to multiple rooms. And the movers were wonderful, and then they unloaded everything, but then we unpacked her that day. I left at 7 p.m. on Saturday. She had everything but a couple of living room boxes unpacked, ready to go. And so that's how we like to support people who are doing a huge transition like that. And as realtors, we end up doing very much the same thing because somebody's panicked about maybe a minor issue in the process of home selling. Maybe everyone's upset because the washer broke. It's not really about the washer that broke because that's a you know $150 <laughs> fix, but it's the one more thing that they had to deal with because now the washer broke and this is so hard. Some of our job is too, just to listen and go, yeah, this is hard. It's very stressful to move. It's stressful to sell. It's stressful to buy. But in the end, it'll be a much nicer, quieter space for her to be in. And I think you might agree, Jan, that a lot of times as realtors, we're also providing a lot of resources, people that can come and clean and, and uh, handyman. And in that example that you gave, someone that can come and repair that, maybe they don't have that resource. So I know probably over the years between you and I, we've probably accumulated, you know, a couple of dozen resources for, for different things for different people. And yeah, they just need that support. It is an overwhelming process. So if we can provide some of those resources, make some of those phone calls, it makes it a lot easier for our clients. We've recently helped a customer with a solution similar to this, where picking items that needed to go to children that are outside of the state. We would come pack and put into storage. And then as we went to the different states, and one was in Maryland, one was in Washington, uh, that we would then deliver. So we would come in, pack and store, and then deliver these very precious items, sentimental items to adult children in other parts of the United States. And that also helped alleviate some of the stress and create a solution where as you go through, it was put aside, we knew where it was going and we were able to move it there. Right. How long do you think a move like this typically takes just in prepping for it, Megan? Well, it always depends on the size of the house and how densely packed they are. And then just like any client, it depends on how quickly they're able to make decisions and process their things. So we like to, I would tell people, we'll go as fast or as slow as people need. Obviously, we're pushing towards being 
effective with our time and but it would just it would depend on the size of their house and how much time they have to commit to it. I would say not in under two months. I think it needs at least a couple of months, if not more like six months. Just it's it's usually quite a bit to get through. But I love working like with Jan and Alita, working with the actual realtors on this to connect with what what do you guys need to see happen and then how can I help put some of that into motion and then reaching out to Carrie and timing out, okay, here's the move, here's about how much we think. And yeah, we've done a lot of what goes to Johnny and Sue and all the all the kids and getting it there. I do always, as a declutterer though, I do always like to check with the kids and say, do you want that? Do you need it? Because <laughs> I, I come across sort of that sandwich generation that has a lot coming at them. <laughs> right now. So we like to check on, on all parts. But with a big downside, I think that's one of the scenarios of moving that takes the most time. Depending, one of my ladies was just ready to let it all go. And boy, she went so fast. It was, wow, she was one of my fastest clients. She was just like, I'm done. I'm done. Let's get rid of it all. So it's very individual. Right. Based. So I would say just planning on if you're in that situation mm-hmm. yourself, Three to six months is really a reasonable time frame. And if, it's, if it goes quicker, then it goes quicker. But it's really just to prep to get your house ready to sell and then moving from there. Exactly. I always say it takes time, energy, or money to manage all of our items and our homes and all the things in it. So I have something in my house. She's actually a sculpture. And we're trying to get it to Colorado. Do you actually... You pick up things, you store them until you're going to different areas. Did I understand? Is that what you do? Let me see if this solution works. We are Colorado-based, and so we will pick up belongings in Colorado and hold them till we're going out of state. But listen to this. When I know where you are, which state are you in, Betty? Southern California. Of our drivers that are taking belongings out and we actually have a trip planned here in the next two weeks going to California and while we're out we absolutely can swing by and pick up something to bring back to Colorado so our intent is to always be carrying some belonging the solution here is being completely flexible about when it would come and the least expensive way is to match our schedule with Exodus moving and storage because then we're picking it up at a convenient time. If you need it at a specific moment, we can do that, but that's when the cost increases. (laughs) From Megan, my stepmother recently passed away and the house is full. And my stepsister is planning to declutter her house and move her stuff in. But they're in Southern California. Do you work with people remotely? How does that work? I can work with people remotely and I can also connect them to somebody on the ground there. I mentioned the garage in Arizona and one in Minnesota. Obviously there's Zoom, there's FaceTime. There's a very cool app called Marco Polo. And that is my favorite thing for working with people remotely because you can flip the camera so they can be sharing their space with me and saying, what about this? And this is here and this is, and then they can flip it back to them and I can do this. I can immediately talk back to them and say, okay, great. We're going to do this, this, and this, or here's your checklist. So we're staying in touch via email and checklist but we're doing video in real time and it's been very helpful because then also all that video isn't stored on people's phone do a lot of that virtually but also if they found uh, they needed on the ground help I'm part of a national organization national association of productivity and organizing professionals and there's a in California I think there's three two or three state chapters there like Mm -hmm. a northern and southern so I can reach out to them and if I know where their address is and where they need help I can try to connect them with somebody on the ground who could take care of them and were you saying they're moving into the house that's full right now mm-hmm. okay house so, full house. <laughs> uh-huh. so just uh, with an estate if if they needed help in this situation if they said oh my gosh this is too much we need to downsize this stuff 
we would obviously suggest coming in beforehand. And what we can do for families, especially after a recent loss, we can sort things out so that the family then can come by and figure out what they might want to take or what should definitely go. And we're also connected to a bunch of estate sale companies. There's one in particular I like to work with. They can also sort and then sell everything too. So once the family has come through and made their decision, if it's a big estate, might as well do an estate sale because most of those companies can sell 90% of them. And then <laughs> they can move in and not be moving into too much. But not everybody follows that. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that is okay. But that would be the suggestion. Otherwise, it gets really overwhelming. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Of course. Um, I just wanted to comment to anybody interested in making a transition in their life to please do your homework before. Figure out the financial piece. Call me. Talk to your realtors. Get those pieces together before you make any moves, before it's too late. Get the game plan ahead of time. Then you have it, and it's easier to expedite the game plan then. And that's my two pennies on any kinds of transition is let's do our homework ahead of time. And I think it's all about really understanding what your objectives are, what's going to be the easiest path for you. And sometimes people want to save money and not hire some of these outside experts. But boy, in the long run, it really is a, a time and an energy saver because it's really, saver. yeah it's really amazing to have somebody come in and and pack everything up this last move i really gave myself that gift and it was amazing really wonderful i i concur very much with what jane said and you don't want to like if you're helping somebody in your family who's maybe been through a loss of a spouse you don't have the emotional energy to do it on your own and if your kids are not close by or they don't have the emotional energy really need someone like Megan to come in and help. And then anyone who's a baby boomer plus, I mean, we, we're too old to be moving sofas <laughs> and beds. And that, I mean, give that to yourself as well, because it'll save your back. It'll save you money at the chiropractor. You might as well spend it with the movers <laughs> and not go the chiropractor route. <laughs> you damage your body. And, Right. And then, you know, along with what Jane is saying, do your research, figure out where you want to live. If you want to live in the outer line country areas, Sterling or Akron or Bennett or one of those places, go there, sit there, have a cup of coffee, talk to the residents. Um, same with anywhere you want to live. Be there in that community a little bit and see if that's the community you like. The last situation has really been kind of true to home because that's my mom, Betty, and my mom, yeah, lost her husband. So that one hit home, right? Yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And, you, and, you know, I've, I've read a lot that after a big loss like that, that kind of can take two to five years to really transition. So it seems like it's been about three. Some people call me where it's, it just happened six months ago and they're trying to do it all and that's really tough. It's nice to be able to let some time pass. Yeah, well, the house that I'm in right now, we same house ever since 1960. <laughs> wow. That's a, as somebody who moved around a lot, I find that fascinating and lovely. That's amazing. I have, I, no one has lived in their house as long as we lived in our house. I've recently helped two different brother sisters where both mom and dad had very large homes with lots of stuff and then they were left with all of it and it was very overwhelming for them when they they were young like in their 20s and 30s but I've, I've seen it happen to friends in their 40s and 50s and all of a sudden they have a giant to-do list on their hands so it's it's a gift to the next generation too just to start to process those things and it doesn't have to happen fast but I have an even bigger shock for you. The house we live in, we pay twelve thousand dollars. Oh, that's a big shock. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a, that's a shock. Nobody hears that either. <laughs> that's incredible. Holy cow! Thank all of our wonderful panel for being here to help us with this event, and the guests. Thank you for coming. It was fun. It was a yes, fun. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you.
Thank you for watching our Homes Reimagined webinar. Thank you so much also to my wonderful team of experts, Carrie Levy with Exodus Moving and Storage, Jane Bell with Platte River Mortgage, Alita Antoinette with Homes That Give, and Megan Keller with Shape Space. If you have any questions about anything that we've discussed here on this video, please leave a comment in the section below and we'll be sure and get back to you. If you enjoyed our video, please give us a thumbs up and be sure and subscribe so you won't miss a single episode. This is Jan Parrish. Have a fabulous day.